Hello retro coders. Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I'm going to get straight into it. Um, I said at the end of the last lesson that we might draw some pixels um, across the screen in in order and then we'll see the order they actually appear in but um, having thought about that I don't want this series to be um, me fumbling about in code back and forth doing things that you wouldn't understand and if I explain everything that would take a very long time just to pull off that one little um, that one little task so instead I'm going to keep it structured um, in a way that I learned it from a book um, that way it will take longer but the lessons are going to be shorter quicker snappier and more to the point so that's the idea anyway um, what we've done last lesson was we printed hello world to the screen um, I'm not going to even bother compiling that because the video just went up online on YouTube and Twitch. If you haven't seen that, go and watch that now and then come back and watch this one. But just check if I've got any live viewers here while we're at it. Doesn't appear so. Um, so yeah, if you want to see that running and you want to learn how to make that, well, if you haven't figured out what this and this is particularly, go back and watch that video because I won't be explaining everything over and over again too much. Right, that aside, we're done with hello.asm. We're going to make a new file. And this time, we're going to just draw some simple graphics, so we'll call this, well, they're called UDGs. Oh. No. We're still just moving text around for now, actually. I'm typing it there. That's simply so that I don't have to type the file name when I click save now. Note that I didn't put a space. Right, so it wants to, it's in my source folder already, which happens to be where, um, look, I could go down here to Z80 because I installed the extension that is there. And as you can see, we've got hello there. Now, you, if you were making a game, you'd probably want to make a subfolder now. We're not quite there yet. So we're happy just working in this folder. Change the extension to ASM. Textmover.asm. So we can now delete that. That was, as I say, just for a title. The very first thing we do with all our programs is create a constant entry point. 32768 org at that point and end at that point. Again, I won't explain it, but that's just so the compiler can make our basic code so that the game will run straight away. All right, so For this lesson, we're, we're just going to learn how to move things that are text characters. <clears throat> In the last lesson, we used text characters that are based, very similar to ASCII, the Spectrum version, a subset of ASCII, just with a couple of differences in the codes, that's all. Um, we saw we used the number 13, or OXD, which is new line, and that's the only one we use so far. Of course, all the letters themselves have their own ASCII characters. We wrote a string such as hello world, but we, we could have actually used all the different ASCII for each of those characters. 
<laughs> it has our data if we if we wanted to. Um, so now we're gonna we, we we're gonna look at um, another ASCII command, and it's a slightly special one. In fact, I'm gonna bring up I'm gonna bring up the website again. We want the at command, which is here. And as you can see, that's green. Now, I haven't read all this, but green basically means it takes inputs. So you put the code in, but then it, it, it immediately after that wants you to input with the X and the Y coordinate. For some reason on Spectrum, they've got X being the uh, vertical position and Y being the sort of um, horizontal the lateral is it position like sideways which is completely backwards I'm sure there is a reason for it especially at the time I don't know and it is annoying because a lot of the tutorial or books you read from back in the day seem to use that that same method spectrum particularly but as you can see we want it at which is at 1 6 in hexadecimal 16 which is 32 2 times 16 no that's not 32 that's a complete lie that would be hexadecimal 20 one more number. it is a uh, 22. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> you obviously know about hex by now, but 1, 0 is 16. 0, A is 10. Alright, so we'll get rid of that. So for this lesson, like I say, we're going to look at that at command, and that's used to position the text on the screen. So again, we load A with 2. This is the same as we did last time. <coughs> 2 is equal to upper channel. That's where we're writing the text, because there's, there's another channel, which is at the very bottom, and it's meant for... Um, if you imagine you were making an application like a word processor on the spectrum you have a column uh, a row at the bottom which is a, a separate channel of text it's probably pretty useful I don't think we'll be getting much use out of it we just use channel 2 and we call 5633 that is the built-in ROM routine of spectrum which opens channel in A. <clears throat> We're going to want some data for a position, a positional value for our text. We'll call it um, XPOS DB0, YPOS DP0. Alright, so don't forget X and Y can can be reversed. Um, I mean, when I code, X means sideways and Y is up and down. So we're going to have to input it backwards quite often into the built-in run routines. So we want a loop, let's just call it forever. Loop 
forever. And if we just want to draw the letter A, well, let's let's do let's let's go one step further. Let's call it a let's call him a guy. Or let's call him a player. Why not? DB. And then we'll go back to our our. Um, we're only using text characters here, right? Imagine you're making a game, but you, you don't know anything about graphics. You just know about text. So, for example, the asterisk there, that might be like an okay little character. If you're going to make one a game using these characters. You could use the copyright symbol, symbol perhaps. Even the at sign. I mean, we're not going to spend too long on this anyway. You could use, you could use the, you know, the letter I. Basically, use whatever you want out of them. There's even an up arrow there, but that is an A there. Oh, I just said it's different from ASCII. I'm going to opt to use the asterisk, which is at hexadecimal 2A. Okay. So my player um, sprite or player. I'm going to call it player sprite. It's hexadecimal 2A. <clears throat> they're eight by eight characters then then the character set so that's an eight by eight sprite of an asterisk and we're going to want to position it at zero zero for now so if we want to do that we're going to use our, our um, print command but this time we can we're not going to use the the rom uh, routine we're just going to use RST16, which actually prints whatever's in the accumulator to the screen. So we'll load A with the data in player sprite. A now contains an asterisk. Well, it contains that value, to be precise, is what A contains. RST 16. I mean that's that's going to print it. That's going to print it for us. Let's just double check that. Oh, I'm trying to compile the. Um, but I've made two mistakes there. Firstly, I'm not in the right folder. So I copied the path. CD. Get rid of the file name. Okay, now Pasmo hyphen hyphen tap bass text mover dot asm text mover dot tap invoke item text mover dot tap. There we go. It, it, it's moving along and automatically printing, which is a problem for us. I actually did expect. Oh, it's because I put it in the loop forever, of course. So we haven't set any positional values. We've just told it to print whatever's in the accumulator, which is what it's doing. 
We then need it to delete. I mean, by the way, this is again not optimized or intended for making games. Um, there is other ways without using this RST16, which we're going to explore really soon. But this is a way of getting a fundamental knowledge of how the spectrum works. So after you print it, you delete it. Sounds a bit counterintuitive, but um, that's obviously how you end up with one every frame in the same space being drawn. And for space, you need another ASCII code, which I know is 32. But let's find it again, just to be complete. 2-0, space. So it's hexadecimal two zero. And if we wanted, we could make a constant of that. Okay. So then we'll, in fact, just load the A with ask. It's, you don't use the data thing because there's no such thing as a pointer to this. This is just like a way of storing a number for your own knowledge. You could just as easily, as easily have wrote that every time. In fact, let's do that. No, let's keep it. We're going to want that more than once. And that makes sense to have it there. So it's loaded the space value into the accumulator. RST16 is another built-in function similar to call. <coughs> and um, I don't fully understand it, but it's calling another run function basically at number 16 and it prints what's in the accumulator. Again, to make games, you don't need to know all this. People don't use these in making games. but you do need to know it so that you understand it. Ha! <laughs> so now we've got lines, so it hasn't worked exactly as intended at all. We're not putting the position back to where it should be before we print. So we'll make a new function now. Set pause. Well, let's not be stingy with the, you know, that doesn't cost the program anything. So let's call it set position. This is where it comes into play where I was talking about the, um, the at command, which is a, a command one more time at command there which I wish it would tell you here but it doesn't seem to where all these green ones require inputs afterwards so the at command is at hexadecimal one six in fact let's let's do it here Okay, so this is weird, isn't it, the way it works. It's very strange. We're having to put a code into the accumulator and call a function on the spectrum, which now says, okay, 
this code would either print whatever characters in that code in the ASCII chart, but it happens to be at. So now it hangs and waits for some more data. Some more data, yeah. It wants um, the X and the Y, but what it actually wants is the Y and the X. It wants the value in there, of course, not <clears throat> not a pointer. <coughs> and then you have to do RST sixteen again. Like that. Okay. Then you always return out your function so that you go back to where you were when you called it. really simple as that to set the position right at the start we'll do set pause I don't know why it's not recognizing that oh cool set position this requires no inputs This might work for us now. Yeah. We haven't cleared the screen. Which is why I stopped using this run routine to open the upper channel in my games. There's another way of doing it. And I've forgotten it off the top of my head. But it clears the it clears the screen and opens the channel. Might be that. I think that's the same. I've just done the same thing. Oh no, that has worked. Yeah, so OX DAF. And the beauty of OX DAF is we can change the border colour. No, you can't actually. I don't think you even need that anymore. Because OX DAF clears screen and opens channel 2. And as you can see, we've now got just one, one asterisk being drawn in the position we want. There'd normally be a border here, so this is zero zero. Let's try changing it. Ten zero. It's working exactly as expected now. So you're probably starting to be able to see how easy it will be to move this thing. This is getting called every frame or every cycle, which is more than every frame. It's a point we probably I should probably show you the whole thing. No, not needed yet. trying to think of a way to show you this without going into too much detail I would like to add um, keyboard input now so you could move this asterisk yourself but that's going to take a long time would get convoluted I want to learn that in a, in a later lesson so um, I mean you, you I could set that as a as a task for you to learn by yourself not the keyboard, but um, trying to move this this asterisk to the left and right on your own and up and down. 
but I'll show you now as well. But I would suggest um, if you feel up to it, to have a go at that yourself and then come back with any questions. But um, I am going to show you it now anyway. So you can either, you know, stop watching now and go and do that or, um, you know, just watch now and find out. Um, trying to think of the best way myself to do this. I mean, all you actually want to do is change that value and then call set position again. But what what um, moment are we going to change X? Normally in my games, for example, there'd be a keyboard input or a timer for enemies. I think I'll just move it every frame. So we're going to do a halt here. <clears throat> what halt does is it waits for the interrupt. Again, you're going to have to look it up online if you don't understand what that is. But um, it is basically when the scan lines of the television are complete, all of them. There's a moment where it recycles back to, to, the, to the first point, the first pixel. And that's when you're waiting. That, that is called the interrupt. And the halt waits for that. So we're we're basically doing everything inside the interrupt there. And what that also does is locks us to 50 frames per second. You can have more than one of them and it's going to reduce your frames per second. Um, heavily. The first one cuts it in half. The next one takes you down to something like 17 FPS I think. So we're locked at 50 FPS so I'm going to say every frame which seems quick but we'll see what it looks like. I remember trying this before and it doesn't happen every frame. After we've set the position, drawn it, deleted it. Oh, my brain, I can't remember what I'm even doing. Oh, moving it, wasn't it? <laughs> so yeah, we can load A. <laughs> what am I on about A? Well, let's make a function that move right. Load A. The value in X pos. Because you, ca you can't just increment that. It's just a piece of data. But A. A knows how to increment it. So increment A. Then load X pause with A. And return. Cool. Move right. I'm pretty sure it's that straightforward. We'll have a moving asterisk now. We'll put him at zero to start off. Well, we ended up with an error, and there's also another mistake. It shot off the edge of the screen, which is quite common. We got an integer out of range. That's fine. I tried to draw it in a character cell that didn't exist. You'd have to put... Um, you need to put a comparison in here that it's not going over that level and then don't move it if it is. That's fine. 
but why did it not delete? Most interesting. I'm trying, doing a bit of trial and error. 32 is the same as your X20, which we had here, but I'm going to see whether that works now. No, didn't make any difference. I didn't think it would. But... I've got a book which shows us this, but um, it's very similar. I don't know what I've done different, really. I've put my own spin on it. The only difference is they, I, I was trying to keep it simple, but they've added a delay. So I believe that's where, where our problem is. Might just be where this halt is. Yeah, I think about that. Let's try there. Also, just to keep it's a bit that's not very beginner friendly. I'm going to make this what I'm doing here is not optimal, it costs this process and more processing time, but it might make it a bit clearer. Display sprite. Delete sprite. Now then, they actually do require that you have the position set up. They rely on it being in the right position. So I should put a note there, say, inputs. Oh. Um, Make sure I know what I'm inputting. Yeah, you see, set position actually presses enter on our act command. It's like it's as if that's gone into the computer and then it fills it with the position. It's not worth going in here. These shouldn't even really be here. We should just be doing that over there. And it hasn't fixed the problem. I won't show you. It's exactly the same. If 
first thing I'm going to do is stop it going off the screen so that we don't get this error every time. It's 255 or 256 0 to 255 pixels along the screen. Our asterisk is 8 in width. I'll load A with 240. Stop it there. CP is a compare is a comparer. Means compare is an instruction. I'll show you it again now. I've got the internet here for you. So I go Z80 heaven CP. Ah, oh, I'm on Bing. So I have to go to Google. Write the same thing. Get a better result. That's what it does. But in a nutshell, all you actually need to know is this here. Forget this. The flags are set accordingly when you compare A with N. So if I want to know, is it over that value that I just set? And therefore, the C flag will be reset, so the C will be zero. If A is over that, um, oh, I need to, I need to load A of X pause, and then compare two forty. If A is over that, return. So return N C. That will only return if X pause is over two hundred and forty, and then none of that will be executed. None of that will be executed. So now, compile. Well, it didn't fix the problem. It carried on going, which I was not expecting. Mm, I mean, I'll try 120 just out of interest. <laughs> Same problem persists. That's weird. I'm interested now if I put zero, does it even that it should just not move at all now? Oh, oh and it doesn't move, okay. Why would it be measuring in characters? It does move a whole character at a time. Yeah, that's my fault. I was, I was working in pixels. There's only um, 32 characters, so I put 31. We should definitely not get an error. Right, at least we didn't get no error, but it's still not um, deleting the previous one. See, I followed the book, putting this display sprite there, but... For me, I'm thinking... We can delete this right. Oops.
Yeah, delete a sprite, then set the position. No, no, that won't work, will it? Because that's needed in there. Could try it twice. Probably won't. No, that hasn't fixed nothing. Still do a lot of trial and error. Oh, that's wor that's worked, but it's deleted it. It's a shame it keeps loading in the wrong screen. I'm gonna have to use something other than Fuse next time. So I think Specky emulator loads wherever I leave it. Pain. Probably just the positioning of our halt now. Let's try to hold there. So we set the position, display it. Then we wait for the interrupt, we delete it, move it, I think that works, so, save, yeah, there we go, now this is really annoying me that I can't put this on the screen, you didn't get to see it moving. What a pain. There's actually no way around that, folks. Not with the setup I've got. Well, maybe I can lean over the microphone, move everything over to here. There with me. Just hold on a sec. Alright. Now it should load in here. Sorry about that. Alright, so as you can see, we had a speedily animated sprite there. Moving across, well, animated as in moving across the screen. God's sake. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, completely lost track of what I was doing now. All right. All right, the last thing we'll do with this particular lesson, I mean, that one, I think maybe this is done actually, because we've, we've named the file text mover. I can't, we can't add keyboard input, seriously, 
this lesson, although maybe we could do that next lesson to this particular file. It's not as hard as you think doing the keyboard input, but um, but it's uh, it's going to get. I don't want to rush through it, you know. There's a couple of bitwise operations in there. We have to roll the byte, the, the bits to the right and stuff like that. I don't want to just do that without explaining. The setup I'm in right now, I can't see any whether I've got any Twitch viewers right now or anything, so I'm just going blind with that. This one, this lesson's been a little bit unorganised due to the, the fact that I didn't figure that out exactly there. The halt was in the wrong place, and what else was causing that to? Oh yeah, I was thinking I was working in pixels. What we'd do here is we're up at thirty one. We'd do another constant, so we'd do like maximum x equals thirty one. I mean I think you could go to thirty two actually. Or does it start from zero? That might well cause an error, but we'll soon find out. And I changed the CP where it compares. So it loads A with the X pos and it compares to maximum X. And if it's over or equal to at that value, <coughs> it just returns from that. Yeah, we got an error because um, it's 0 to 31. Yeah. It moves a bit too quick as well. These are, we have to work in integer values. We can't tell it to move 0 0.01 of a pixel per frame or, or of a character cell. Um, what we're going to have to do is introduce a timer or a delay of some weight of some kind. It's pointless to doing this. This lesson isn't about move. You know, we don't. It's not about delays. It's about this app command, the RST16. We've um, learned how to. I can call these variables. People will, might tell you off. We've, I've been told it's not a variable, but for all intents and purposes, it is. If you know what a variable is, that's the same thing. But the thing you've got to imagine is you can add more data here and completely mess up if you don't know what you're doing, you know. Um, so just be a bit wary of that. We're going to get more into it soon in terms of adding data in arrays. In fact, the very next lesson, I'm gonna, we're going to create um, user-defined graphics. We're going to transform um, the existing character cells like A, B, C, D, E. We're going to create our own version. You, there's a there's space on the system for your own, and then we'll, we could also replace um, the existing ones, but we probably won't even do that. We'll just fill up the blank spaces that are called UDGs. We'll get to create some smiley faces and bomb, something like that, you know, some simple 8x8 eight eight graphics. That'll be done um, very, very, very soon. In fact, maybe straight away after this lesson. Um, what else have we learned this particular lesson that's about it really very slow paced very simple for beginners this is and um, yeah next up like I say it'll be UDGs we'll display the graphics display numbers the very same lesson will um, use the keyboard to move that 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 new character we build around. 
and I'm going to try and come back today and do this to, um, for you. I do have work in a couple of hours, but I might, if I have time, I'm going to do it before work. Thank you for bearing with me there. It felt like eternity when I was trying to figure out that bug. Um, I hope you see how I fixed it. It was all just to do with the ordering of the, um, of the instructions there. I was deleting it too quickly. Like in the very same instance that I was drawing it. So the halt there stops that. I think it's a bit weird because normally I have the halt on the top. So there must be a way if you think about this. I'm pretty sure this will work the same. Yeah. So, after that stumble, we've still made some good progress. Next time, we're going to turn that 8x8 character into a face and a bomb, and we're going to move them around. We're going to start like um, doing collision movement. Eventually, uh, not collision, keyboard movement. Eventually, we will do collision as well. But that'll be two or three lessons away. And it's only going to be on 8x8 cells for now. Taking it much slower this time around. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.